Happy Sabbath. I used to know how to say that in about seven languages, but Sabbath Mao and a few others, but Happy Sabbath works. Evidence. The available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. Evidence. Anything that helps to prove that something is or is not true. I didn't write down the sources. There's a couple of dictionaries that were on Google, and one of them had the source there. It was a Cambridge or something. The other one didn't, so I didn't put it down for either of them, but you can look it up. Evidence. What do you think of when you think of evidence? Proof. I came up from a th thesaurus there. Evidence, proof. I remember when I was young, one of my friends told me, you can't prove anything. I said, yes, I can. I can prove this hurts, and I punched him. And he says, you can't prove that that hurt. You can just judge my by my reaction that maybe it did. But you really can't prove anything, and I, I gave up on him. I couldn't prove anything to him anyway. What does it take to prove something to you? What is proof? You know, there's a text, Hebrews 11.1, And then my Bible, just a second, got my markers in the wrong spot. There we go. Hebrews 11.1 1, and King James says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is evidence of things not seen. In my Revised Standard Version, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith. If you know me much at all, you know that I've talked about faith now and then, and probably because I've had a struggle with faith all my life. I felt like my faith wasn't quite where it ought to be. Need a little more, you know? Kind of like pizza. Except pizza, you can get too much after a while, but I don't know that you can get too much faith. So I've been studying about faith. Why study it? I think it's important. There's a text in Ephesians 2.8 that says, For by grace are you saved through faith. If I'm saved through faith, I want a little bit. I want a little bit more. I want even more than that. I want a lot of faith. If it's faith that saves us. There's a huge study there about what faith is and how it saves you and how it all works. And probably the greatest help for me in understanding faith and realizing the importance of it was reading after I met him. He had a week of prayer or whatever they called it when I was in college, spiritual emphasis week or something, a guy named Morris Venden. And when he talked about faith, it made sense. And I can't say that he said anything to me that I hadn't heard before, but he put it together so that it made sense. And I found that was a struggle as a teacher. You know, the kids have heard this stuff over and over, but to help it make sense to them can be the challenge. You want them to think about it and understand it, and Morris did that for me with faith. Well, he started it for me. I won't say yet that I understand faith completely. I'll just say he started me down a road of studying a little harder to find out what faith is. By grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God. Well, if it's a gift from God, and I come up a little bit short, whose fault is it? Mine. I don't think there's a limit to that gift. There's another text in Romans 12, 3, that finishes by saying, God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. 
I don't think those measures are all identical. I think it's kind of like that day that he was hiring, a, he told the parable about hiring a bunch of workers and he had these guys come out early in the morning and they started working, some more came in later and more later and they weren't getting a job done apparently and they got guys coming in all day. And at the end of the day, he paid them all the same. Who would say that's not fair? <laughs> Anybody there before noon? <laughs> Anybody reading the story, but not those that got there late. Well, they might have said it too, but smiled. God gives us all a measure of faith. How much? How much faith do you have? I've asked myself that several times. Have I let God give me all the faith that he wanted to? How much faith do I have? It's kind of hard to measure. You know, in Sabbath school class, in the lesson this morning, we're talking about where our treasure is. You know where your treasure is? For me, it's kind of easy to figure out. Look and see what I do with my 24 hours a day. I can kind of measure where my treasure is by where I put my time. But how do I know where my faith is? a little bit by where I put my time also, I believe. But also, by trying to see what I have faith in. What is the limit? I have faith in a lot of things. I spent my week putting my time into something that I hope works. See, a couple of weeks ago, I was coming back from um, Wenatchee about three or four weeks ago, and um, the clutch went out of my truck up in Quincy. You know where Quincy is? That white trail road or something that you can miss Tw Quincy by going south and up and save some time. I was on there, and I went to put the clutch down, and I felt a funny little feeling, but the clutch didn't disengage. There was a little chunking feeling noise. So I drove home, shifting like you do when you don't have synchros. And I drove it home, most of the way, till Cliff picked me up with his trailer and hauled me the rest of the way because I had also knocked a wire off from between my alternator and my uh, voltage regulator thing. It's not really voltage regulator. It's not quite that old. Oh, this is my truck's birthday. I'd have you sing, but probably don't have time this morning. It's its 50th birthday this year sometime. And. Um, I dropped the engine when I was pulling it, so I landed upside down. I had to replace the carburetor, too. I'm putting new clutch in. Got a couple parts for the carburetor I got to put on it. You've heard me say before, if you've got a Ford, you'll be a good mechanic. You got to be. And um, I have faith. I believe that by Monday morning, I'll be able to get in that truck and turn the key and have it start and drive it again. And it'll stop when I put the clutch down. It'll go when I pick the clutch up. And it'll really go because it's got an old 428 interceptor in it. But anyway, is that faith? I think it's a kind of faith. But what's the limits of faith? I have faith that I'm going to eat a good lunch today. That's kind of based on experience. I won't talk about the first loaf of bread that I remember Jana making, but I'll say she can sure bake bread now. <laughs> if we have bread with our lunch, it's going to be good. It was good last night. We have the same thing. Well, not the same thing every Friday night, but the same kind of thing every Friday night. Sweet bread and fruit. Man, she'd get some good breads. And the fruit's good too, but that's got a different background. I have faith in a lot of things. I have faith in some people. People that have treated me well and I can count on them. Is it faith when someone hasn't treated you well and you count on that too? Maybe, I don't know. But faith in a lot of things. What is the limit? I believe I exist. I have a little evidence to make me think I exist. Things have hurt me a few times. Things have scared me a few times. Things have made me happy a few times. 
I bumped my head a few times. I believe there's life. I believe there's death. I believe there's happiness. I believe there's something they call chance or luck, usually based something on some choices we've made. I believe in creation. I even believe in seven days of creation. If you count the Sabbath as part of creation, and I think he created it for us, says he did. People say, well, probably it was 7,000 or 7 million years. You know something? If he could do it in 7 million years or 7 billion years, he could do it in 70. If he can do it, you can do it. Seven days is okay with me. And it must have been kind of a fun seven days. But I'd hate to think of those fish swimming around in the ocean for 7 million years with nobody to catch them. I believe in creation, and so I believe in a creator. And when I believe in a creator, I believe in a God and Jesus and the Bible. Belief, faith, what's the difference? Oh, we could go into quite a discussion on that, but when I use the word belief and faith, they're going to be pretty much parallel this morning. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Bible. I believe where does my belief stop? If I believe in all that, is that all I need? I don't think so. I think I need to believe in a little bit more. I think I need to believe in the things that Jesus said. Well, believing in the Bible, believing in what Jesus said. What did Jesus say that I need to believe in? I have plans for you. Me? I love you. In so many ways, he said that. It was easy for me growing up to know that Jesus loved my mom and dad. They were good people. And even my siblings. There were nine of us. And I'll have to say that the other eight all looked good to me compared to what I knew about me. I could understand Jesus loving all of them. But it was harder for me to accept that Jesus loved me because I knew things about me that I didn't let anybody else know that weren't good. My little secrets, the little things about me that weren't as good as they should be. So it was harder for me to have faith that it was all for me too, not just for everyone else. And I think we all have to go through a hurdle of some kind of discovering that God loves me. They try to teach us that. What's the first song you remember learning? I'll bet it was for a lot of you, Jesus loves me. Because they start teaching you that before you can talk or think or anything in Sabbath school. If you got to go to Sabbath school as a kid, which, praise the Lord, I did. My first Sabbath, I didn't. I was born at, was it 820, Sabbath morning? I think I missed it that week, but I'll bet the next week I was there. One of my older sisters probably carrying me, maybe one of my brothers. They liked having a little brother. It's a bunch of girls, and all their brothers are happy to have a little brother. Our faith has to go to the point that we know that all of this was for us. And my kids used to ask me, when I, when I say my kids, I'm talking my students. And I remember I was here in Pendleton teaching when one of your children, I'm not sure which one, asked me, they wanted answers. What would God have done if Adam didn't sin too? Well, what did he do with Adam and Eve? He threw them out of the garden. He probably would have thrown Eve out of the garden and left Adam in there. He had more ribs. But what about poor Eve? Maybe she would have had a child. And they said, how could she do that without Adam there? Ask Mary. Maybe she would have had a child, Jesus, and he would have died for her. I think it was in his heart and his love to do that. I know that it was in his heart to die for all of us, and I'm one of us. It took me a while to accept that. So I tried to measure my faith. Okay, he loves me. He died for me. So what? What does that do to my life? 
I was in college when I started figuring out that it was, I was really one of them too because you know, I, I never felt like I fit in anywhere. When I was young, I got to go to church school. My dad, we had a neat school there. They had what they called a temple plan. Nobody paid tuition. Everybody knew what it cost to send a kid to that school for a year. So you put it in a church. Tax deductible, offering. It wasn't for your kid. And all the kids could go to the school that wanted to. My dad was a dairy farmer and he worked construction full time and he had nine kids and we couldn't put us all in school every year, but he knew how much he put in, so he put three of us in school every year. I was on the younger end, I was second to the last of the nine, so I got to go for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Otherwise, I was in public school. And I'm glad for my, I went to public school because it helped me understand what we had in church schools when I got older and was guided into an occupation teaching school, and I didn't like school. But in college, I started realizing knowing that God loved me wasn't the end. It's the beginning. If God loves me, and I love him, what's that mean? And reading his commandments and listening to what he had to say to the disciples and everyone else. You know, we're talking Sabbath school class this morning. I never had a voice come to me and say, Lenny. I was Lenny until I was 20. Lenny, you need to be a teacher. If I'd heard that voice, I probably would have run farther than Jonah. But I did know that I should find a way to serve God. And there was reasons I knew that I couldn't be a farmer. But I didn't know what I could be. And I prayed about it and wondered about it. But I knew I needed to serve God. Because I loved him. I didn't understand what he said exactly when he said, when they asked him, what's the greatest commandment? And he says, love God. And then without them asking, he says, and the second one is like it. Love, love each other. But I learned about that over the years. Because I love God, I became a teacher. I learned to love others, and what a life. There's nothing easier to like than kids. I mean, sorry, old folks, you're okay, but you were kids once. But it's awesome to be able to work with and teach kids. It was an awesome life that God had planned for me. Faith led to a relationship with God that made a huge difference in my life. Why am I sharing this with you? For the old ones, because it will help you know me better, but for the young ones, you need to find a way to serve God with your life, and he has a plan for you. And you'll hear about how you should serve Jesus because he loves you and all this and that, but there's other things you don't always hear. Like, serving Jesus is fun. It's exciting. It's amazing life. I wouldn't change my occupation for anything. So the plan of salvation, God's love, it was very specific for me. Did I ever hear his voice? No. Yes. Not from him, but from Morris Fenden. A lot of different teachers, parents, and from a book. This Bible doesn't look very good, but it's pretty good. If you look inside, at the outside, it's kind of, you know, like I hope to be. I hope the inside's better than the outside. It's been through a motorcycle wreck, and that didn't help it. It was in my backpack when I bummed around Europe. That didn't help it. It's appearance, but it helped me. Has my life, faith changed me? Yes. Totally. From what I might have been to what, praise God, I was allowed to do with my life. That one text up there says, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is evidence of things not seen. What's that mean? Evidence of things you don't see. That's what faith is, is evidence of something you can't see. Trying to think how to understand that for myself, I think I came closest with electricity. 
I have a pretty good evidence that electricity exists, but I've never seen it. I've never seen faith. I've seen results of faith. I've seen results of electricity. They're bright. It's loud. All kinds of things electricity does for us or to us. I felt electricity. When I went through college, I worked as a, um, I had earned my own tuition. And uh, worked maintenance, and I had to work for an electrician a couple of times when I was working maintenance, because they bounced me around from this area to that, trying to find out where I could be useful. And the electrician liked my work, and he says, hey, you have any time in the evenings you can help me? Yeah, what do you do? Odd jobs, odd jobs. New England, houses, built 17, 1800s, 1600s. They had bathrooms and plumbing by the time I got there, but when I was working my way through college, I had to help wire these houses. Mostly, what we ended up doing is putting in rooms for washers and dryers. You want to try crawling around under a house that was built 150 years ago where the cats have been, and the dogs, and the coons, and the possums, and the, anyway, even mice. Electric, electricity in the attics, just a point of interest, would be on insulators with bare wires. No ground, just a hot and a neutral coming down. You'd see where a mouse got across it. Anyway, you can't see the electricity, but you can see the results. That's kind of where faith is with me. What does faith look like to you? Your picture of faith is based on what you have seen as results of faith, I believe. And I said believe is the same as faith. Well, anyway, maybe I shouldn't say that. Faith is evidence of things not seen. My faith is built on things I've seen in my life. I believe God led me. Things I've seen in nature. I grew up outdoors a lot in nature. And if you haven't, I hope you get a chance to see more of nature. And while you're out there, think about what you're looking at and why it's there and how it's there and how it works with other things. It's amazing. And if you think of it as being created for a world without sin and how it stood there for so long with sin, you're pretty impressed with what the mind behind it had to be. Things in nature, awesome to look at. Our parents' love and their care in my life. These are things that I see that give me faith. Guidance and decision making. You know, some decisions are pretty easy. But it was pretty hard for me to buy a Ford truck. I was looking at a Chevy truck that morning in Walla Walla. I was back there getting my finishing up college so I could start teaching down in Vanita, 1978. And I'll go and look at the Chevy truck. The guy says, sorry, I can't start it. There's no battery in it. Well, I had a cure for that. I had a battery in a car I could take out and put in it, but I didn't bother. He, he went to check something, and I pulled the dipstick. And when I pulled the dipstick, I, it caught. I thought, that was weird, because it wasn't caught like as metal to metal. It caught like, and I looked at the end of it, and it was kind of like tar on it, sticky stuff. So I put the dipstick back and met him when he was coming back in. I said, I think I'm going to look for something else. He said, what's wrong with that? I said, are you mechanical? Well, yeah. I said, pull the dipstick. And I kept going. And I get to Gianna's house where I was visiting. <laughs> kind of an attraction there. And she has a brother, George, and he says, I found a truck for you. Where? And he had this weird look. And I said, a Ford? He says, yeah. I went and looked at it and bought it. But there was guidance in areas of my life that were really important, not just what kind of truck to buy. Do it really matter to God if you buy a Ford or a Chevy or Dodge? Yeah, if he wants to be a mechanic. Or, but anyway. Some things mattered. I had a hard time in college because I was getting I was through my sophomore year and coming back and I didn't know, I didn't even enjoy dating much. I mean... The girls just, I couldn't find one that I could imagine living with for the rest of my life. 
either I didn't want to live with her, or I didn't think she would want to live with me or something. It just, it was, Lord, I'm leaving college for a year, going as a student missionary, and um, when I get back, guide me. <laughs> On the way to be a student missionary, I had to stop in Hawaii, and a bunch of student missionaries got together there, and we met at the Adventist Book Center that morning. She walked in. I didn't recognize her for what she was. She did me, apparently, and it went from there. But he guided. Gianna has been a wife to me that anything good you know about me wouldn't be as good as it is and might not even be there if I hadn't had her behind me all the way through. It's important to have the right spouse. It's easy to make a wrong decision there. It would have been for me anyway. My occupation, school teacher, uh uh. Yeah. Farm boy goes to the Pacific to do building and maintenance to make me teach. The college finds out somebody's got to go over there and teach. Quail can't teach. We will pay your round trip. They didn't pay any of mine. I had to pay it all myself. But nobody came. I had to teach. And by the end of the year, I told the Lord, Lord, you need principals out here. I don't know what to do with my life. I'll train to be a principal out here. If that's not supposed to happen, stop me. If it's supposed to happen, help me along. <laughs> He helped. I could tell you story after story about things in my life that to me is evidence. What is evidence? Faith is evidence. My faith is based on things God has done in my life. You can look at it and listen to it and say, so he meets a girl in Hawaii and he likes her and they fall in love and they're happy ever after. Oh, so what? You can't say that to me and have me believe it. So how much faith do I have? Not quite enough. And that's okay, too, because God still loves me and will do things for me. There's a text in Mark 9.24 that's on the front of your bulletin. That man's son was in bad shape. I think it was a son. This one, yeah. And he wanted him healed, and Christ said he needed faith. And the man says, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I think that's where it's at. I can't prove to you that God exists. I can't prove to you that God loves you. I can't prove that he has plans for you. I can tell you that. I can try to help you see it but I can't prove it to you, excuse me. I'm almost totally over that. I can't prove that he's guided me through my life, but I can tell you something has and it's been proven to me. I can't prove God to you, but you can't prove that he hasn't guided me through my life. You can't even shake my faith because I've got evidence. And I'm supposed to have a benediction. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift of faith. Help us to all recognize the evidence you give us that will build our faith to be what it needs to be, to keep us growing, to keep us sharing, to keep us loving you and others. Help us as we go our different ways this week that you'll go with us, that through this week, we will continue to grow. And next week when we come together, we can know that you've been with us and we've made a difference in the lives around us. In Jesus' name, amen.